Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the 2020 Preparedness Vehicle Survival Kit. Now this kit is basically designed for my myself, myself and my family. I commute to work every single day. I have the family wagon. Uh, I drive a Tahoe. So I have quite a bit of space to put things, the babies and all the other good stuff. Everything that you see here is in my vehicle in some way, form, or shape, or another. Most of it's going to be inside of a Plano box, and I'll get that. I'll get that. Uh, I'll show you that to you as well. The stuff that you see here is going to be specific to me, my needs, my thoughts, my experiences. Your vehicle size, what you need, and what your thoughts and what your experiences will differ. However, you should have some of the basics. This kit is designed to help me survive in case I get stuck, in case I get stranded. Uh, in case I'm in a location where I can't get out for an extended period of time, all right? That goes along. That goes without saying that if I'm on a family trip and my vehicle breaks down and I'm in the middle of the woods, I need to have a certain amount of equipment and tools to get me either a out of there or b call for help so I can get out of there. This is not a bug out bag. This is not a get home bag. All this kit you see here is perishable. What I mean by that is if my vehicle, if I have to leave my vehicle, if my vehicle dies, if it catches on fire, if it falls down a cliff, all the stuff that you see here is perishable. Okay, move on with your life. As long as you are sustaining life, you're good to go. If all this stuff disappears tomorrow, you can still sustain life. All right, that's the whole point of the get home bag. The get home bag is completely different from this. So you're not going to see those personal items these are just items that I can afford to lose. Now, I don't want to lose any of them, but again, I've had my vehicle broken into and a lot of my stuff were stolen. Um, I've got caught in the woods where I was sliding down the side of a mountain and the only way to get out was to dig myself out. That's with about 300 pounds of freaking camping gear, all right? So that's a whole nother story for another day. Um, I've slidden off the side of the road. I've had to change tires by myself. So this type of kit is based on my own experiences. Now, I will add in a couple other extras, whereas uh, right now we're in the middle of the COVID riots. There's no other way of saying it. So there will be a couple of personal protection items on this list or on this kit. Some of the stuff I leave in the vehicle, most of the stuff like a firearm, magazines, that kind of thing will be on my person at all times, okay? Uh, I'm not in an area where it's either legally or smart to leave a truck gun or any of that stuff. So again, depending on your location. All right, a couple things that you won't see here that's already on order um, is the stop leak. Stop leak is something that you would put in your radiator. The majority of the stuff that's going to break you down is probably mostly the tires and the radiator, some type of cooling system failure. Okay, there are electrical problems issues and also brake issues, but brake issues are not something that you can fix right away. Uh, I tell you a quick story where I was going to the doctor, my brakes failed miserably and I almost slid off the side of the highway doing 70 miles an hour. Luckily I had my emergency brake that was still intact and I was able to stop and limp the car back to a gas station where I was able to get it repaired so I can go home. I was 40 miles away from home, okay? That type of breakage is not going to be fixed by anything here. However, uh, stop leak, your radiator starts acting funny, you're losing a lot of uh, pressure, uh, it's overheating, stop leak will work. You can put water in there. Uh, JB Weld, I uh, have it on order. JB Weld is good for some of the leaks from the tires, not the tires, the uh, any type of air hose, uh, that kind of thing. Okay. Fix a flat. You won't see fix a flat here because I've used it already. But if you, I highly recommend get a couple cans of fix a flat. It's not that expensive. I'll put all the links down below where you can purchase it. I put one in my car and one in my wife's car. All right, pen and paper. Obviously, all that stuff is already in the glove box. I'm not going to pull it out just to show you pen and paper. Okay, pens, papers, markers, any types of stuff that you need to write stuff down is typically in the, the glove box. Um, and water. I usually carry about one to two cases of water either in the heat or in the cold inside my vehicle at all times. All right, that's just a preparedness thing. You can carry jugs if you want to, but I like to carry um, the small water bottles and the reason is, is because if I go on a hike or a hunt or if I need to use them, let's say 
Um, I'm drinking a lot of water. I need to pull over to the side of the road. I'd rather refill those bottles, if you know what I mean, okay, instead of just peeing all over the place. So, again, each is own how you carry your water. There will be water inside the vehicle. All right, so let's get to it real quick. Um, on, let's see, I'm going to have to go in through these individually because it's a very large spread, and we'll get to it, okay? All right, I had to lower the camera down a little bit so you can see it. First and foremost is the diaper bag, all right? So if you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about, all right? Now, this diaper bag is specifically for the vehicle. We have our own diaper bags that we carry with the children on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you go into grandma's or the park, you would carry that diaper bag. This stays in the car. This is an extra diaper bag. So very simply, changing pad, uh, sippy cup, change of clothes, diapers. Um, I got a little extra food here for Junior. All right, these are the little vegetable things. You don't need any type of spoons or anything. He just grabs it and goes after it. All right. These are baby wipes. They're not only good for babies, but if you're caught in the woods and you gotta go, well, grab the baby wipes and go. I don't think you'll fit in the diapers, but you should be good to go there. And over here, we got some quick diapers, quick pull diapers. This diaper bag is pretty cool. It's made by Diaper Dude. And of course, we have some extra garbage bags, specifically for when Junior is done with number two. You just don't want to hold on to that diaper. And please do not litter. Do not throw it on the side of the highway. Tie it up, zip it up, and you're good to go. So, that's for Junior. Inside here, this is an SOE bag, this is a boot bag, I had it on a special. Um, if you guys are not familiar with SOE, I highly recommend, they make really good kit. This is a uh, multi-cam black, really cool. Inside here I have my rain kit, this is all Gore-Tex, I also have an extra set of cold weather. Now we are moving into the cold weather season, so it only behooves you to have that kind of kit. So these are very heavy duty winter gloves. I have a scully cap and I have my top and bottom Vortex camouflage bottom. Also, I also have this. This is a fleece. I highly recommend leaving a fleece inside your vehicle. Don't use like, I know a lot of people like hoodies and sweatshirts in the winter. I get it, it's comfortable, it's cotton. But if, this, if a fleece gets wet, you have a better chance of retaining that heat as opposed to a hoodie, which will suck all that heat out of you. So some type of synthetic doesn't have to be this color it's up to you uh, you could also use a wool sweater if you like just something that if it gets wet it's not going to mess you up okay so that's my rain kit all right i got my extra layer uh this is something i picked up this is a reflective tent it fits great inside that uh, tote and basically if you are stuck somewhere where you need to be out of the vehicle most people will shelter inside the vehicle and there's good reasons to do that and then there's sometimes there's no good reasons to do that if if your vehicle is crashed on the side of the road you're probably not going to be able to sleep in it okay so this is an extra layer of protection wool blanket self-explanatory again u.s military grade wool blanket i think you really need to have something like that um i, I know that uh, these bivy sacks i also keep an extra bivy sack in there this is an escape bivy by SOL. I think it's okay, um, but as far as really, really cold temperatures, this should be a layer. So if I had the tent, um, I would use this inside and then of course snuggle up inside of this as well. So you'd have three layers of protection. Of course, any type of cold weather kit that you can add on to it is even better, okay? That's the way I kind of look at that. Also, black bags black contractor bags. You can't go wrong with black contractor bags. I, I have at least seven or eight in here. The thicker the better. You can also fill these up with duff or leaves. Um, I've used these pretty much to anywhere from, you know, cleaning up game to throwing out, you know, whatever garbage on the range or anything like that. So ideally, anything that has to do with black bag, anything that has to do with survival, you're going to need some black bags. Okay. All right, let's talk a little bit about some tools that I got over here. All right, this is the ice scraper combo. Um, I might, it seems kind of stupid. You might not think that this is such a good piece of kit, um, but when it's freezing out, it's like seven degrees. I live in the Northeast. Um, instead of getting something from your house to sweep the snow off or to scrape it off, just get one of these and throw it in your car and forget about it. It's not a big deal. You can also get 
the small scraper, you know, for your ice or whatever, it's not really that big of a deal, but it's better to have it. And better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, okay? A couple things what I do with my tool selection. A lot of the tool selection is based on personal experience. If you live in a city, you probably won't need an axe or a hatchet or anything like that. However, uh, if you're like me and go hunting, a lot of times you get stuck in these areas that you're not familiar with okay so i always carry some type of saw this happens to be a bow saw i think this one is a 21 inch bow saw it's a little rusty or whatever but if you get into an area and then there's a tree right over your tire or down where you didn't expect it um good luck trying to chop it out with a hand axe okay so the hand axe is good for certain things but i much rather cut through it with a saw and of course if you're trying to be quiet a saw might be a better option. I also have extra blades on order with that. Now with the hand axe or hatchet, it's good for small stuff, kindling, wood, if you need to make a firewood, it also has a hammer on the back. This is not the most expensive type of kit. Again, it has to be perishable. If this burns up in a fire, I don't care. I go to Home Depot and for a couple bucks, I pick up another one, okay? It's not a big deal. All right, this is my little pickaxe or uh, I forget what they call this one, but um, I have gotten places where I got stuck and I needed to dig out my vehicle and sometimes the shovel that I have is not able to do it. So if you have rocks in your area, get this small little, I think it's called an ADS. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's called an ADS. Uh, it has the flat piece here and then the, um, the pickaxe there. So really cool. I like this little thing. It's small. It's convenient and it's able to move rock. Uh, let's look at, uh, okay, sharpening stone. I just have the sharpening puck in there. Obviously, when you start hitting rocks and dirt and debris and roots, you're going to need a way to sharpen it. Okay, so I live here in the Northeast. However, in the summertime, a machete is probably a little bit more useful. Uh, this happens to be the one from Brazil. This is a Tramantina, Tramantina machete. It is an 18 inch machete, okay? Uh, when you first get it, it's going to be really dull up front. You're going to have to do a little bit of modification. Uh, all I did here was I kind of rounded off this metal piece. They're made very cheaply. It's about a $12 machete. I just put a little lanyard cord here up front. I did like a little finger choil and put a lanyard hole. There's no way you can put a lanyard hole in the back on this machete. It's just not the way it's designed. And then I don't think it does come with a... Um, sheath so the sheath that you can buy is the cold steel 18 inch that's the one that fits on this machete I think a machete in itself is a very good tool it doesn't it's not going to take down big large trees but if you're walking through the woods or if you're looking for kindling that kind of stuff uh, when it's very um, there's a lot of trees or it's summertime or fall it comes in extremely handy okay so I always try to keep a machete along with my axe and my other cutting tools available if I need them, okay? Uh, as far as shovels go, this, this shovel right here is a snow shovel, okay? It comes apart, really cool. It also, I think this is called the, the lifeline, lifeline. So what this does, and you can actually extend it, all right? It's a very useful shovel for the snow. So this is the actual shovel that I used to dig myself out when I fell off the trail. And you can see it's got some chip marks on it and everything. This is not used for heavy digging, okay? It's not. This is strictly just a snow shovel that folds up really nicely. You throw it in your, your car, your kit, and you're good to go. I think that in itself is worth its weight in gold. I'll, I'll try to find it and put, on, put the links down below. Alternately, and what I do is I carry two shovels. This happens to be the military e-tool. All right, this one I think is from, is this Glock? No, this is Gerber. So this is Gerber USA, all right? It's an e-tool, military e-tool. This one's a little bit lighter. I use this mostly for heavy stuff, okay? So this is not a snow shovel, but you should have some type of shovel in your car, any type, okay? The heavier, the better. However, the snow shovel makes it a lot easier to move heavy, um, large snow, and this is more of a digging tool or an entrenching tool, okay? Any type of multi-tool, good to go. This happens to be the Gerber, all right? Very simple, the Gerber diesel. Not very expensive. You can do the one-hand flick if you like. 
I like this one for the vehicle because like I said it's perishable if if it gets stolen it gets broken it gets burned up again a lot of this stuff is a little bit cheaper I do carry a Leatherman most of the time and Leatherman's very expensive so I would mind losing that okay a couple of self-protection tools that I have here again this is bear spray I keep this uh, close by it's either for four-legged animals or two, and you know what I'm talking about. A lot of these Antifa maniacs or knuckleheads, they try to come up to the car. You give them a little Dallas of bear spray, and I guarantee they'll back, back off. Also, I have the ASP. All right, I'm a big fan of an ASP. All right, self-protection tool. Probably not good against bears, but definitely good against Antifa or anybody else that's trying to hurt you. Again, I carry a firearm for a living because I'm able to make sure that you're allowed to carry uh, these tools as well. Some people carry baseball bats and that's fine too. As long as you can explain it. I also carry a set of handcuffs because if there is an altercation or something happens that um, maybe you have to subdue somebody, trying to hold them down versus just handcuffing them is going to be a lot harder to do. So if you have a pair of handcuffs, you handcuff them and you wait for the police. That's exactly what you do if you can wait there. If you're getting attacked and pelted and you get the hell out of the area, you make the phone call and you, you do what you have to do. Okay. Uh, a couple other things. Let's talk about the flashlight system. So my flashlights are running on D batteries. This happens to be the Sportsman Rayvac. I think they make this in a different model. Uh, I think you can take this off as well. You can take the top off. You can hang it upside down as well. This is more of a camping lantern. Uh, the reason that I went with a lantern as opposed to a flashlight, even though I have one, is because if you're sitting around an area or if you are, uh, let's say, inside the vehicle and the vehicle is not working, a lantern seems to work a lot better. Okay, It has three different types of uh, settings. And, of course, I use the same D batteries that I use for the mag light. Now, this mag light is a pretty old mag light. Okay, uh, I replaced the bulb in there. It's no, it's um, now it's an LED. It's a little bit brighter. It's not awesome, but the same D batteries that this takes is the same batteries that the lantern takes. Again, not old, not really that expensive. I could afford to lose it if it if I have to. And then of course I have my little backup. This is just a little spinning backup light. All right, not great but it works in a pinch. I think the kids just like playing with that kind of thing. All right. So that's my flashlight. My multiple layers of lights. So I'm going to move the camera over and then we'll continue. All right. Goes without saying you should have a good fire extinguisher. Uh, this happens, I think this is the ABC one. Try to get the ABC or the one that's car rated for vehicle fuels, electric, that kind of thing. Uh, I will say that I have used this on a vehicle fire once before. You got about 20 seconds of um, extinguisher in here. It's not a lot. If it's enough to get the person out of the car, that's it. Don't try to save the car. It's not going to work. You don't have enough in here to save the whole entire vehicle. All right. Uh, pretty beefy toe strap. All right. I don't know who makes this one. I think it's okay. Smitty built. Uh, and of course get the large uh, U-rings goes without saying you're gonna need some type of way to tow yourself out if you cannot get it out now some trucks have um, winches I do not I always carry some PPE because now that's the world that we live in uh, when it gets to signaling signaling let's talk a little bit about signaling most of the signaling you're gonna do is in the form of some type of road flare so I have my own Pelican box that I use for road flares, okay? So inside here, I have the standard road flare, okay? What's good about these is that they burn for a very long time, regardless of the weather, regardless if it's wet, if it's snowy, whatever the case, it will burn. Uh, it also will start fires. So if you need to start a fire because you're stranded, this is a good way to go. I have a flare alternative. These flare alternatives are nothing more than big old chem lights. Okay, it's a yellow chem light. It's about a 12 inches long. You break it and then you put the little wire on it. And then what that does is if it, it lasts longer, it'll last longer than any of these road flares. Okay, 
So I have that, that's in its own separate box. I also have these, which are fantastic. I like these a lot. If you are stuck somewhere, you definitely want a set of these. Now, they don't, you don't have to have all six of them. I think they sell them in ones or twos or threes. This case in itself will charge. So it's actually a charging station as you put them in. If you put them in correctly, these two buttons down here, it will charge. This is also magnetic. The way you turn these on, and they do have different flashing uh, mechanisms. So uh, there you go. So once you turn it on, you can see how bright that is. You can change it. So it'll just give you like a one side. Hold it again. Let's see. Light. So it gives you a couple different options. I don't think that one's fully charged. There you go. So you can have different type of strobes. All right. It gives you the blinking strobe. This is more of the police strobe. Just on and off. And then just solid on. Okay. So it's a really cool kit. Uh, it's uh, AERVO. Arvo. Ervo, low, one side, and then off. So again, you can charge these um, by cigarette lighter or by um, a regular household plug. And also what's good about this as well is that it's magnetic. So it has this little magnet on it. You put it on the side of your car and then anybody can see you from anywhere. All right, so that's pretty cool. Also, uh, as far as signaling, I have a good old hunter's orange vest. All right, now it is hunting season. However, I always keep this in my uh, in my kit, and the reason is is because if my car is down in a ditch, I can't find my strobes. Whatever the case is, maybe I'm trying to walk out of the woods and be spotted. This little orange vest will help people find me. Okay, I don't remember the story, but there was a story where I think it was a family of. Uh, it was a family of three, um, husband, wife, uh, baby, and the baby was newborn, and then they went on, I think it was in Canada or something, where they went on this trip, uh, their car got stuck, and they wound up spending like over two weeks there. The guy finally died. He actually tried to walk out because they were out of food, they were out of water, they had nothing in their car, and the winter actually killed them. So um, she was found, she was okay, the baby was okay, but that's because they stayed with the vehicle. He was trying to walk out by himself and he didn't make it. He died of exposure, I think he had sneakers on, all that kind of stuff, all right? So that being said, a lot of people like to keep another set of shoes inside the vehicle. If that's your thing, that's fine. I typically wear work boots anyway, so it doesn't affect me. Uh, females typically use shoes that are for the day or for the night, okay? So they're wearing high heels, they're not gonna wear sneakers, so you might wanna throw a pair of sneakers in your wife's car for her, okay? Just to make her comfortable. Um, this is the quad wrench, this is the smaller one. Highly recommend getting one of these, either the smaller ones or the larger ones. Don't get the ones that bend, just get the solid piece. It's not that big, you're throwing it in your vehicle. Uh, this thing has saved my life more than once because the tires on my vehicle are very difficult to get off because they do rust from time to time and it's very hard to get the bolts off so this little four-way wrench works really well I also have a small survival kit all right inside the survival kit it's waterproof I just throw it in the tote it's good to go I have a little bit of band-aid stuff another survival blanket some fire starting materials a whistle uh, there's some fishing stuff in there another compass a flashlight some cordage that kind of thing um, not a very large survival kit again but I don't tend to be there forever, so this little kid, I just throw it in there and forget it, and if I need it, it's already in there. All right, uh, before we get into vehicles, all right, let's talk a little bit more. I got my medical. Let's talk about medical. All right, now this kit is a very, very extensive kit. This kit is made by, let's see, Combat Casualty Response Bag. I think you can all look at, yeah, North American Rescue. So North American Rescue made this for the military. This kit is very expensive. You can either strap it on, let's see, you can strap it on your waist, you can set it up on Molly system, or you can actually attach it to your ruck. 
So this is a very, very extensive kit. I always have this inside my vehicle. All right. So if there's a car crash or a wreck, everything in here is, is, is made for mostly trauma. So inside here, I just have my headset. All right. And extra batteries. All right. You, you can, I, in my opinion, it really depends on what your style is as far as doing trauma. If you are not certified, I would recommend you get certified in basic first aid. Go to your local first aid, take some TAC medic type of courses, all that good stuff, okay? Because it will save a life, trust me. All right, so I have some stuff up here, some gauze, um, more masks. This is actually a seatbelt cutter and glass breaker. Make sure it's inside the kit or inside your vehicle. You should have one of those anyway. So if you got to try to get out of your car or into somebody else's car, this will work very well. I have a lot of tourniquets. I don't want to pull all this stuff out, but as you can see, it's stocked with a uh, trauma kit. All right, anything from burns. Uh, I have quick clot. I have lots of lots and lots of H bandages, gloves, markers, splints. Um, this is the uh, decompression needles, all right? All kinds of really good stuff in here, all right? So I don't wanna go too far into it because it's very hard to close, but if something happens on the way to, for you or for your family, it makes sense to carry an extensive car kit. I'm sorry, an extensive first aid kit. So let me explain that to you. So if you are in the middle of nowhere, either by yourself, or with your family um, or with your friends. Let's say you're going out hunting or hiking or whatever the case and this guy breaks his leg. You at least have something to put the kids or the guy's legs back together, okay? If he gets shot, you have something to help him out, all right? You're not carrying this around. It's going in your car. It's very small and very agile and you can take it anywhere you want to go. So, highly recommend if you are gonna do a first aid kit, Please do one that is extensive, okay? Not just a little boo-boo ouch stuff. I have boo-boo ouch stuff in there as well for the, for the kids, but that's mostly a trauma kit, okay? All right, this right here is my fire and water pouch, okay? So if you're not familiar with this, if you ever served in the military, it might look familiar, okay? This is an old, I don't know if you can buy these anymore or you know, talk to a friend that maybe still be active, but this is where we put Claymore mines. All right, this is a Claymore mine pouch. And in here, I put my fire and I put my water, okay? See if you can see that, fire and water, okay? Now, I didn't mean to have this work out this way, it just worked out this way, but when it comes to making fires and making them quickly, as a like cooking and stuff like that you're not going to be gas okay this type of cooking this type of fuel is going to be fast it's going to be down and dirty it's going to work you don't have to rub two sticks together okay that being said i have multiple ways of making fire so i have my little stove in here and then inside my pouch i have my windproof matches i also have a lighter And then I also have a fire steel that's already dummy corded. Okay, this is a, I think this is a six inch, six inch, quarter of an inch round fire steel. For my water, let's pull this out. Nalgene can, flat on the bottom. Uh, I think, I forget what ounce this is. But single walled Nalgene can. I can take this off if I want. If I want to boil water th with it, I can carry water with it. This just happens to have a CRKT eating tool with it. A couple little tools on there. I have my nesting cup. And I have my Soya Mini. On top of my Soya Mini, I also have purified water or aqua, portable aqua. Okay. So what this does, again, this is not a bug out bag. Okay. This is not what this is designed for. This is the oh shit factor. This is, oh my God, I'm kind of stuck here. Do I have anything that I can use in my vehicle that will allow me to use heat, that will allow me to cook some foods, or anything that I have 
that kind of thing. That's what it's designed for. Okay, so I'll repack this in a minute. So that being said, I also have my food pack. Okay, inside here I have seven packages of food. All right, this is freeze dried food. So you're going to need water. All right. The water I said, I have a case of water inside my vehicle. That's exactly what this is for. Okay. So I have seven in there. I have an MR. These are four servings per bag. Four servings per bag. So that's quite a bit. I have my little K bar. Eating tools. So I have a fork, a knife, a spoon. I usually just throw that kind of stuff in there. And then what that does is it allows me to have some nutrition if I'm stuck. Uh, again, it is not the get home bag. So I know someone's going to say, well, how are you going to carry all that stuff? I'm not. This is if I'm stranded and I can't get out. Okay, so that's my whole food kit right there. I got fire, water, and food in two little packages. Okay, here and the other one. Let me move the camera a little bit more. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about navigation. So back in the day, I know I feel kind of old, but back in the day when we did not have um, GPS and we did not have cell phones that would do all the GPS, uh, we had to actually read road maps. <laughs> so, all right, get yourself some road maps. All right, this is the trucker's guide. It tells you about national parks, it tells you about every city that you're going to be in. It's a large geographical map. These are just road maps. When I say road maps, it makes sense because you are in a vehicle. This is not a top topo map, okay? This is not telling you uh, what little location. This is to get from A to B, all right? Get the, the road atlas and then get the one for your uh, state, wherever your state is or wherever the state you plan to go to. You can actually read, you can read up on it. Uh, it's not that hard. I've used them for many years. You just look for the address or the location and then you map it out yourself with pen and paper or some highlighter. Okay. Um, get the vehicle book. I don't know if they keep saying, I don't know, do they sell these anymore? These Chilton's? This is a pretty old one, but learn how to fix your book. Uh, learn how to fix your own truck. Okay. So this is the manual for your vehicle. All right. Anything that's in it that you didn't put in it, it's in this manual. So I always pick it up anytime I get a car, okay? Um, GPS, Garmin works great for me. Uh, if you are someone that goes into the mountains a lot, like I do, you're gonna need a GPS. GPS works on satellites, all right? Not on your cell phone. So your cell phone GPS is not the same thing. It'll only work on cell service, cell towers to give you the GPS location. Well, when you run out of that service or the, or the cell towers are not near, you are going to lose connection, which means now you're driving blind. So get yourself a good GPS. You can get a handheld if you like. This one happens to stick on the back of the window, so it works pretty good. Uh, ultimately, again, I have a compass. This happens to be my Lenzetic compass. This is military grade. They cost you a pretty penny. They're about 70 bucks. They're not cheap. This is the compass I learned on, all right? Um, when I go hunting, when I go camping or fishing or whatever the hell it is I'm doing, I always have a compass on me. This is the one that I learned to use. The Sunto is the other one, okay? So this one and Sunto are the only compasses I trust. The other ones that are made in China or the cheaper ones, I just don't trust them, okay? Uh, two is one, one is none. So if you want, get one Sunto and get the U.S. Lens at a compass. There's a lot of fake knockoffs. Uh, don't get the fake one. You'll tell because it's only like $15. That's not the real lens at a compass. Uh, as far as communication, I always keep this in my truck. This is the Midland Micro Portable CB 2 in 1. Okay, it includes an adapter that will hook up to your cigarette lighter, uh, 40 channel handheld CB radio, etc. etc. Push to talk. It has a whole bunch of features, but it comes nice in this little convenient box. Now, I know someone's going to say, well, why don't you just get a ham radio, okay, or get the Baofeng. I understand that in order for you to transmit as a ham radio operator, you have to get your license. I am not licensed. I don't feel like getting bothered by the FCC if I'm in trouble. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to use my cell phone. 
If I can't use my cell phone, I jump on channel 9 or 19 on the CB radio. Hopefully there's some truckers around that will come and help me or at least call 91 for me. Now, I don't know the whole thing about ham radio as far as emergency calls. I'm pretty sure people will help you because if you're not a licensed operator, okay, maybe there's a fine or whatever, okay? But it's better than nothing. That's kind of the way I look at it. So have, have some form of communication other than your cell phone in your vehicle. Okay, ham radio is better, CB is less better, but if you have it, it's better than nothing. Uh, cordage, I always have a bunch of cordage. Let's get a little bit more into the car stuff. This is my inflator. Okay, so if my vehicle gets flat, I could hook this up to the cigarette lighter fix the car, fix the tire, whatever it is, put it into the 12 volt cigarette lighter, it'll blow up the air tire. Blow up, put air in the tire and then I could drive off. All right, bungee cords, tarp, kind of self-explanatory. I will say that this tarp mostly gets used for game animals. So uh, if you're like me and you like to go hunting, you usually throw the animal in the back of your vehicle and a tarp comes in good because when that sucker's bleeding all over the place, it's disgusting, okay? And then you got to try to clean it out of the upholstery and all that other good stuff. So, always have that. All right. So, inside here is my tool bag. All right. This tool bag will always be inside my vehicle. Just a couple extra bags. All right. Now, I know someone's going to say, well, why don't you get those car charge batteries? All right. So, the battery boosters, these are uh, jumper cables, but the battery boosters have to maintain or stay maintained. Uh, charged in order for you to use them. So if you have your battery booster and it's in the back of your vehicle or in your trunk and it's been there for months, do you think you're still going to be able to charge your vehicle? The answer is no. All right. So you have to be diligent with that. With these, you just throw them in your car and yeah, it's a big ugly mess, but as long as you have another vehicle, you can boost them. They're both good. I don't say they're not both good. They're very good. And if you had the chance to buy both, buy both but make sure that you have that battery charge ready to go. WD-40, duct tape always. Uh, this is a siphon, okay? This is a very, very cheap siphon. Get yourself a siphon. Uh, I don't know if you remember during the gas shortages, a lot of people were filling up gas tanks and then bringing them home to their vehicle because they had to wait in line. So unless you like sucking gasoline through a hose and not getting it in your mouth, get a gas siphon, okay? More gloves, more gloves, more gloves. All right, work gloves. If you're working around a vehicle, you're gonna need work gloves. Take as many as you can, okay? I have just regular run-of-the-mill stuff in here. This is my fix-a-flat, all right? So I have all the tools that I need to fix a flat tire inside the zipper bag, okay? If you don't know how to fix a flat or fix your own tire, you really need to learn. It's not that hard. Most of the hardest part is just getting the tire off the, uh, off the, off the vehicle, all right? All right, ball peen hammer, tools, screwdrivers, needle nose pliers, wrenches, all kinds of good stuff in here. Also a small bolt cutter, all right, bolt cutter. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and do any type of stuff that's illegal, but I'm, I've been in places where um, a bolt cutter such as a friend's house maybe he forgot his key or whatever the case and you know locked up his four-wheeler and now we're stuck there waiting for a locksmith well here's your locksmith so stuff like that kind of comes in handy especially if you have it in your vehicle all right pry bars all right this is a, a razor knife you know just basic tools this is a um, you know very simple very simple drain okay so you got to put fluid inside your vehicle you want something you don't want to spill it all over the place all right so all right guys so i hope you like this video uh, i show you that everything is in there all right i have all my kit that's in there i got my food i got all my tools and everything is in there all right you can get better totes if you like there are little stuff like that goes in the glove box and on the side panels that i didn't include in there uh, that'll just go right back into the car and a lot of the stuff that you can see needs to be accessed readily available so i don't put it inside the tote such as the medical the fire extinguisher some rain kit baby kit road flares that kind of stuff should remain outside and readily accessible if you guys like this video uh please like subscribe 
Also, if you want to support the channel, please go to 3riverblades.com. Check out all the great USA handmade knives that I make. And also, if you're looking for a Kydex holster, go to 3 River Kydex. Also, have some medical kit up there. And if you don't want to do that, you can also go to my Patreon page. It's only cost you a dollar a month. Go to Patreon at 3riverblades.com. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you found the information useful, and I hope that you are going to have a safe and prosperous 2020, and whatever's left of it, please stay safe out there. Thanks.